you know, future engineers, subscribers, viewers, and students, there is a lecture video in about inverse trigonometric functions and their graphs and the introduction of spherical trigonometry. So in this video, we will have principles and sample problems and the topics to be considered would be inverse trigonometric functions and their graphs, arcs and sectors, other trigonometric uh, functions, concepts, definitions, facts, principles, and formulas in spherical trigonometry, and right spherical triangles and uh, rules. So first, for the inverse trigonometric functions and their graphs, so if we have y equals arc sine or inverse sine of x, if y is arc sine or inverse sine of x, then sine of y equals x. So if we have y equals arc sine of x or inverse sine of x, then sine of y equals x. So likewise, if y equals arc cosine of x or inverse cosine of x, then cosine y equals x. So this is the result from that. So if y is arc sine of x or inverse sine of x, then sine of y equals x. If y equals arc cosine of x or inverse cosine of x, then that means cosine y equals x. If y equals arc tan of x or inverse tangent of x, then tangent y equals x. If y equals arc cotangent of x or inverse cotangent of x, then cotangent of y equals x. Then if y equals arc second of x or inverse second of x, then second of y equals x. Finally, if y is arc cosecant of x or inverse cosecant of x, then cosecant y equals x. So that's it. Now how about for the graphs of these inverse trigonometric functions? So from your uh, trigonometry before, the graphs of the inverse trigonometric function is the reflection of the graph of the original function about the line y equals x. This line y equals x is a line that cuts the first and the second quadrant, so making 45 degrees with the horizontal. So the technique in sketching the graph of the function and its inverse is we write the function first, then we interchange the, for instance, f of x equals x over 2 minus 4, then we let it y equals x over 2 minus 4, then we solve for x, then we replace x by y and y by x, then that resulting function is the inverse of the original function. So for instance, f of x equals x over 2 minus 4. Then let's sketch the graph of this function and its inverse. So to find the inverse of this function, we imagine that y equals x over 2 minus 4. Uh, we simplify it, solve for x in terms of y, then finally replace y by x and x by y and that's the inverse of the function so y equals x over 2 minus 4 multiply everything by 2 so 2y equals x minus 8 so that means x is 2y plus 8 then we interchange so x we replace x by y and y by x then this is the inverse of this original function so y equals 2x plus 8, that's f, that's the inverse of, of f of x. 
So two, we interchange. This is y. This is x. So 2x plus 8. Then for the graph, we sketch the original graph when x is uh, 0, y is negative 4. Then when y is 0, x is 8. So that's it. So we first plot when x is 0, y is negative 4 here. Then when y is 0, x is 8 there. Then we connect these two points with a straight line as shown. Then that's the graph of the original function f of x equals x over 2 minus 4. For the graph of its inverse, which is this, uh, which is this, when x is 0, y is 8 there. And when y is 0, x is negative 4. So that's f of x equals x over 2 minus 4. So again, when when x is 0, y is 8. And when y is 0, then x is negative 4. It's here. Then that's the graph of the inverse f of inverse is 2x plus 8. Therefore, for the coordinates, if this is 0, comma, negative 4, then we also have for the inverse negative 4, comma, 0. If this is 8, comma, 0, then we have 0, comma, 8. In general, for the original graph, if we have a point on the original graph a, comma, b, for its inverse, there is b comma a so again if a point a comma b is on the original function then there is a point b comma a on its inverse so that's it that's the relationship and this is the line y equals x that divides the first and the third quadrant so all you have to do is reflect this original graph of the function about this line and we will get this graph of the inverse of that function. So for sine function, so that's y equals x. For sine function, uh, we consider negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 only. So we have when we have uh, for the graph of sine, it oscillates between negative 1 and 1. And when x is negative pi over 2, f of or sine of negative pi over 2 is negative 1. So that's the amplitude. And these points here are negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. Sine of 0 is 0. And sine of negative pi over 2 is negative 1. So that's the graph of y equals or f of x equals sine of x. For the graph of the of its inverse, so if we have here a point negative pi over 2 comma negative 1, then on its inverse, there is negative 1, comma, negative pi over 2. Then 0, 0, so 0, 0. If we have here pi over 2, comma, 1, then we also have 1, comma, pi over 2. Or we simply reflect that graph about the line y equals x as shown. So this is the graph of the inverse sine of x. So if there is negative pi over 2, comma, negative 1, on the original graph of f of x equals sine x, then for its inverse, there is this negative 1 comma negative pi over 2. So 0, 0 is also 0, 0 for its inverse. And if we have uh, pi over 2 comma 1, then we also have 1 comma pi over 2. So this is now the graph of its inverse, the graph of y equals inverse sine of x. Now for 
cosine of x, we know that cosine, we consider 0 to pi. Cosine of 0 is 1. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. And cosine of pi is negative 1. So we have here negative 1 comma negative pi over 2 for the inverse. And we also have 1 comma pi over 2 for the inverse of sine of x. Then this is for cosine. We know that it also oscillates between negative 1 and 1 the graph of cosine, and cosine of 0 is 1 here, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and cosine of pi is negative 1. So that's pi over 2, 0, and cosine of pi is negative 1. So the graph of cosine of x, considering 0 to pi, is this as shown in the figure. Then we reflect that about the line y equals x for its inverse. And if there is 0, 1 here, we also have 1, 0 for its inverse. Then it crosses here because this is the line y equals x. If there is pi over 2, 0, there is also 0, pi over 2. If there is pi comma negative 1, then we have negative 1 comma pi for its inverse as guide. So that's y equals x. And this is the graph of the inverse of cosine, inverse cosine of x. So we have the following uh, points. So if we have 1 comma 0, then we have 1 comma 0 because there is 0 comma 1 for the graph of cosine of x. We have uh, pi over 2 comma 0. Then we also have 0 comma pi over 2. This is pi comma negative 1. So we have negative 1 comma pi for the inverse of cosine function. So... That's it for the inverse of cosine function. We then proceed to the graph of tangent and its inverse. So for tangent, we know that the period is pi and it is negative infinity for negative pi over 2, positive infinity for pi over 2. So that's x equals pi over 2. That's x equals negative pi over 2. Tangent of 0 is 0 here. Tangent of pi over 4 is 1. Tangent of negative pi over 4 is negative 1. Tangent of just to the left of pi over 2 is positive infinity. And tangent of just to the right of negative pi over 2 is negative infinity. So the graph of y equals tangent of x would be as shown in the figure. So that's a graph of y equals tangent x. So for its inverse, if we have uh, negative pi over 2 comma negative pi over 2 comma negative infinity, then we have negative infinity comma negative pi over 2. So the graph, we have negative pi over 2, 0, and positive pi over 2. If we have almost pi over 2 comma positive infinity, we also have positive infinity comma pi over 2 as shown for the graph of the inverse of tangent. Or we simply reflect this graph here about the line y equals x as shown in the figure. So that's it. That's the graph of the inverse of tangent. And it is bounded by negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, as shown in the figure. So.
that's it then we have arcs and sectors so let's derive formulas here for the arc length of a sector and for the area so by similar figure so the radius of the circle is denoted with small r the central angle is theta and the arc length as s as shown that's the central angle theta so by proportion s as to theta equals uh, circumference of a circle which is 2 pi r and the central angle of the circle circle 1 revolution 2 pi so 2 pi r over 2 pi therefore the arc length is s equals radius times theta after we cancel 2 pi here so s equals radius times theta likewise area of sector as to theta equals area of circle which is pi r square so area of sector as to theta equals area of circle pi r square as to central angle to pi so cancel pi then area of sector is one half r square times central angle theta in regions so take note that theta should be in regions and if we break r square into r times r and noting that r times theta is s so r times r and r theta is s so the area of the sector is also r s one half the product of the radius and the arc length s or area equals r s over 2 then we also have other trigonometric functions and you should be familiar with this you just memorize so first we have verse sine theta or verse theta which is equal to 1 minus cosine of theta so verse sine theta or verse theta is 1 minus cosine of theta Coverse sine theta or coverse theta is 1 minus sine of theta so that's the uh, definition of this trigonometric function which is uh, not so familiar but you have to memorize this because in problems on trigonometry these functions might be uh, asked or involved in an equation and you should be able to write its equivalent function then we have half theta or half verse theta which is half half of verse theta so half of this so one minus one half of quantity one minus cosine of theta that's half theta or half verse theta so one half of quantity one minus cosine theta in surveying we also have x second of theta which is second of theta minus one then we also have verse ver cosine theta ver cosine theta or ver ver cos theta which is one plus cosine of theta verse ver cosine theta or ver cosine theta is one plus cosine of theta then we also have co cover cosine theta so cover cosine theta is one plus sine theta so co cover sine theta covers cosine cover cosine theta is one plus sine theta so there is also have covers theta which is half of this so it is one half of quantity one plus sine theta and so that's half covers theta or half of uh, covers theta 
So half, half of this. Then finally, when you compute for the chord or chord data, we just imagine that the radius is, is 1. So the opposite would be 1 sine theta over 2 if the central angle is theta. So just like the chord here. So if we imagine the radius equal to 1, so the opposite half is 1 sine of theta over 2. Since the, the other right half is also 1 sine theta over 2. So chord or chord theta is equal to 2 sine of quantity theta over 2. So chord theta is also 2 sine quantity theta over 2. Then let's proceed to spherical trigonometry. So let's have the concepts, definition, facts and principles as well as formulas of spherical trigonometry. So we define a spherical triangle as a curved region bounded by arcs of great circles. So this is very important in the study of astronomy and navigation. So a spherical triangle is a curved region bounded by arcs of great circles. So that's it. The great circles are the largest circles of a sphere, and therefore they pass through the center of the sphere. So great circles are the largest circles in a sphere. So the projection of the sphere itself is the great circle. So if the radius of the sphere is r, then the radius of the great circles would also be r. So Let's consider this figure here. We have great circles that intersect. So that's the first great circle. Another great circle. So we, let's mark it with A, then another intersection B. And the third intersection is C. As shown. So this is the spherical triangle, this portion ABC. And it is bounded by great circles. So circles through A, B, and C are great circles, which form the sides of a spherical triangle. So that's the spherical triangle. Take note that the sides are great circles. It is not a spherical triangle if, if the sides are just small circles or not the great circle. So it should be a great circle. So circles through A, B, and C are great circles which form the sides of the spherical triangle. And the corresponding sides, just like in trigonometry, opposite to angle A is side A, opposite to angle B is B also, and opposite to C is side C. Also notice that the interior angles of these spherical triangles is greater than the corresponding interior angles of a plane triangle in trigonometry. So again, circles through A, B, and C are great circles forming the sides of spherical uh, triangle. So that's it for this part. Uh, let's have the other video because it is long. Let's have another part here.